Welcome to the Plant Free MD podcast with Dr. Anthony Chafee, where we discuss diet and nutrition and how this affects health and chronic disease, and show you how you can use this to optimize your health and happiness, both mentally and physically. All right, hello everyone. It's uh, Dr. Chafee again with another episode of the Plant Free MD podcast. And here I have a special guest, Jessica Henrad, who uh, I've come to know, uh, who's helped me out with her um, special brand of, of um, NRT. I, I always forget the, um, the acronym, yeah. but yeah, and um, sort of neurostimulation, sort of wakening up your your muscles and nerves and getting them working again. Uh, so, Jessica, thank you so much uh, for coming on. Thanks for having. It's so nice to see you and making yeah. time and your scrubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're busy, but we just sort of fit these in when we can. Um, well, thank you for coming on. Um, you know, it's it's obviously you know I've been talking to you uh, just you know through the through our sessions together and, and sort of learning about that, which is very interesting. It's not something that I've come across before, but um, in in respects to today, you actually yourself have a coming to carnivore story and. Um, and uh, maybe you can tell us a bit about that and, and a bit about yourself. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, so carnivore for me is reasonably new. I went like full, full carnivore only in January this year, 2022. But kind of for the first three years, two or three years before that, I went heavy meat based. Um, and it's been bloody absolutely amazing. Life changing for me. Um, I have been in health and fitness. Like you mentioned, I specialize in a rare form of neuromuscular therapy um, called neuroreset technique and um, been doing that for about a decade, about the last 10 years, but I've been in health for two decades. So I started off in PTing and did lots of post-grad stuff and all the different things. Um, and so food has always been something for me that's um, – thought about I, I suffered as a teenager with being overweight with you know um lots of digestive issues I just thought that was normal digestion I thought everybody kind of had a bad stomach I had lots of different testing done they thought I had like Padgett's disease and Crohn's disease and I had lots of examination as a child um and as a teenager I wasn't the healthiest um and so when I got into personal training and got into the health industry and started learning more about the body I was very much interested in nutrition because it's massive I didn't have any idea at the time how big an impact it was on my health and um and so once I started trying these things and learning more about food I basically went paleo so I was eating meat and vegetables nuts and seeds I wasn't eating processed foods um and although I always like really knew the benefit of meat and was like yes I need to prioritize protein and associated fats and you know good nutrients I ate a ton of plants like a ton of plants um and so I thought I was super healthy. I like promoted it. I like, you know, I taught lots of clients to do it. I would take them off things like bacon and give them low fat alternatives. Um, I took away, you know, I would used to get my clients to take their chicken stick in off and throw it in the rubbish. I mean, I'm done. I mean, I'm like, surely I'm going to go to hell for that. Like chicken <laughs> skin. <laughs> so I promoted this. So mm. when I started hearing about it, and I don't know if you know the story of how I first actually went carnival. No. Basically, my fiance is a big nerd. He does tons of study and research. He does NRT as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's his mind. He loves looking into things. And he was like, oh, babe, you need, to, you need to listen to this guy. You need to look at this research. You need to start looking at this carnivore thing because this, that, and the other. And at the time, he was working out of London. And so he was sending me stuff. And I was like, I don't have time to watch that. You know, I'm super busy. <laughs> And um, he said, babe, watch this bloody video. It's got this Kiwi guy. He's got a potty mouth just like you do. Right. He's like super honest um, and his content is insane. And I was like, oh, fine, send me, send me the YouTube. And it was Bart K. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, 
oh my god that was my professor at university like that is so <laughs> weird I was just completely blown away by it and even and and is my fiance he'd like had a bit of fanboy he was like oh my god you know Bart K oh my god like his, <laughs> his brain's amazing and um and yeah so I got back in touch with Bart because I hadn't spoken to him for like I don't know 15 years or something yeah. insane um and yeah started looking into it so that was like okay how have you missed this how have you missed yeah. this Jess? like it's pretty bad that I knew a ton about physiology, about the human body, about food, or I thought I did. It was what I was literally so indoctrinated with that information and I believed it. I literally believed that nutrients, vitamins, minerals, you need plants, you need vegetables, you need them and you need them in a variety of colours and you need all of the, you know, fiber and you know just I just was utterly conned and I started looking at it and going oh my god that makes sense like what but saying and what how have I missed that plants have defensive chemicals in them like yeah. I felt a bit stupid and it just shows how much I had my blinders on about what I wanted to think I knew and how I was not staying in my lane either by you know giving people even dietary advice at that point I who did I think I was just because I'd done things on myself it doesn't mean that I'm qualified to I actually educate people in this kind of thing but I didn't really want to look at that or think about it too much so that was how I kind of fell into this whole thing and started looking at things in more detail was from that point. Yeah. Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor at Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is to just eat meat. But for those times that you're out hiking, road tripping, or stuck at work and you want a nutritious snack that is just meat, fat, and salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. So I like this product not because it's just pure meat, but also because I want the Carnivore Market to thrive as well. And the more we support meat-only products, the more meat-only products there will be available in the mainstream. So if this sounds like something you'd like to get behind, Check it out using my discount code Anthony to get 10% off, which also applies to subscriptions, giving you 25% off total. All right. Thanks, guys. Very good. Um, it's always funny to me when people talk about you know, eating the rainbow, you want to have all these different colors. You're like, what nutrient is yellow exactly? You know, I need some more orange. I, I feel like I'm having a, like a purple deficiency. Like, what is that? That's such a, that's such an odd thing to say. And um, and and when you think about it, it it, it doesn't really seem logical that you just want to eat things that have different colors like what what you know i don't i don't know how that 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 correlates with actually you know getting getting enough nutrients that's always been very funny to me i know i used to yeah. spell it like honestly like it was the truth yeah. i almost was in like a religious state with how i felt about food and my relationship with food had always been really terrible I, I had done every diet you can imagine, Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig's, it's like these different supplements. I did, I went, you know, I went vegetarian for a year, got really sick when I went veggie. Um, and my mum was like, no, you're eating meat again, you know, and that was with all the supplements, all the monitoring, all the bits mm. and bobs of doing it right, you know. Um, and so I... I even used to believe so wholeheartedly in this stuff that I'd learn elements of it. Like I knew that we couldn't absorb the nutrients and stuff from seeds and from nuts. And so I would soak them and I'd sprout them and I had the dehydrator, I had the nine tray Excalibur and all the things. And I'd make all my own hummuses out of vegetables. Not, not I didn't use pulses or grains. Like, like I thought I was so clever. To me, yeah. So yeah. I, I used to honestly. I just I look back and go, oh my gosh, yeah. It's quite scary. It's like I never stopped ever to consider the fact that if I have to put this this food through a process so that my body can absorb anything out of it, is there not a, maybe a question there at all of um, 
why are you doing this? Why are you eating this? Should you even be eating this? I, mean, I don't even ask myself. Yeah, no, it's it's a very good point, and it's something that people don't uh, ask. I was I was I was about to say the exact same thing that you know if we don't have these processes in in you know in our bodies already then whatever you're eating cannot be what you're designed to eat that cannot because you don't have the the biomechanics and machinery to break down that that food safely and to get the requisite nutri- nutrients out of it and so if you cannot do that then obviously you are not biologically designed to do that you are not bi- biologically designed to eat that substance whatever it is and so you know that's that's something that people say is like well you know like the WHO says that, you know, five uncooked kidney beans can put you in the hospital. Right. And, uh, the response that, um, you know, I've heard some vegans say is like, well, but we don't, we don't eat, you know, uncooked, uh, uncooked kidney beans. So that's, you know, that's not a fair analogy. It's just like, no, that's, that's exactly the point. You don't have the ability to eat raw kidney beans. You have to cook it. You have to process it, which means you don't have the natural ability to do that, which means, it's not natural for you to eat it, which is the entire argument that this person was making that we actually are herbivores, which is crazy to me. I mean, this is, this is something that's only come around, I think in the last few years that people have actually been sort of taking this seriously and trying to make this as a, uh, you know, a serious argument before that, like no one, no one, you know, was saying that, that we were herbivores. That's insane. But uh, that, that seemed to be the, the argument. And if you have to process it, if you have to put through some some chemical matrix to extract the nutrients because you can't do it yourself and you have to do the same chemical, similar chemical processes to get rid of some of these toxins and poisons because you can't do it yourself and you, you, you can't do it yourself. This is not biologically appropriate because when we were out in the wild, we did not have these, 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 um, processes. So we wouldn't have evolved with them. We wouldn't have grown our brain with them, you know, maybe down the road, which is what we did. We were able to figure out how to eat species inappropriate food more safely and get more nutrients out of them. But you couldn't have, you know, that couldn't have been what we evolved on because we can't do it naturally. Plain and simple. Yeah, I I know people get a bit stuck. I think people get stuck. That's what it is. It's like you have to swallow a really bitter pill especially if you're in this industry and you've been spouting that it's so good because it is a bit of a hit to the ego almost. It's like, I have to admit that I was so wrong and I was not clever and, um, you know, really uh, that I've just been completely duped. And it is a bit of a bitter thing to swallow, especially when you have like the need and the want inside to really help people because then you're like, well, what have I been doing? I have harmed myself. That's one thing that's not great. I'm, uh, and I'm harming people and, you know, to just get an extra dagger and they're paying me to do it as well. And I'm, I'm telling them the wrong thing. So I think people get stuck and they don't want to admit that it's wrong because even when they're presented with all of the facts, like you said, looking at basic mechanisms, you couldn't have eaten that. Yeah. You know, like you ate a potato, it would kill you raw. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. this, this, you know, it's like, oh, no, it's fine because we cook them. Well, what? Yeah. So the, the, the smaller amount of poison is acceptable to you. It's just yeah. they get stuck because then if they say, oh, actually, that makes sense, you're right, what does that mean for them? It just shows where people are at when they're not able to open their mind and when they get defensive and they stand in a stance that doesn't really make any sense anymore. And I just think it's a bit of a shame because hopefully most people that are in this kind of realm want to actually help people. And so you have to just, as a human, just admit that you didn't know better, but now you do do better. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. And some people have, you know, a lot of, well, a lot of people have, and like, you know, yourself and um, even, you know, professor Tim Noakes out of South Africa. I mean, he was one of the world's experts on exercise you know, physiology and, you know, he's saying that you have to, you have to eat carbs, you have to eat carbs. And people even talking to him that he said that it was like someone in the nineties said, that it was just like, Oh, well, what about this? And he's like, no, no, absolutely not. Keto just doesn't work. It's uh, and he, he just blew them off. And, and he says, he looks back and he's just like, man, I've been, lying to people for 33 years. I've, I've really done a lot of harm. And so now he's, he's going back and trying to sort of set the record straight and he's been attacked for it. He's been you know crucified for it. And, you know, they, they've taken him to court. They've tried to 
you know, uh, destroy his life, destroy his career. And this is what, this is what you see around the world. You know, uh, Dr. Um, you know, Gary Fetke here in Australia. I mean, they really came after him. They're like, how dare you give nutritional advice to your patients? Like what it's working. You know, he was, he was saving them from having surgeries, which you'd think the medical system would like seeing as that it's the medical, you know, the government has to pay for these things. You know, it's not like a, like a private, you know, Dr. Baker, um, pissed off his, his, um, hospital back in America because he was getting people better with just dietary changes. So he wasn't bringing in as much money to the hospital anymore. And the hospital is just like, well, that's garbage. We want more money. And, you know, so you can see that sort of, you know, uh, that, that sort of interest, you know, pushing that direction, but why would like a socialized healthcare system, you know, not see the value in that? that you can actually avoid surgeries that cost tens of thousands of dollars, over a hundred thousand dollars. Some of these spinal uh, fusions and back operations are, are hundreds of thousands of dollars and for the big ones. And so you can actually, you know, and, and so Dr. Fetke and Dr. Baker were actually show, were actually getting people better and not needing surgery, not needing joint replacements, not needing all of these big, horrible surgeries. And, um, and so if, and Fetke was like saving the, the system tons of money and then they came after him, you know, most people say, you know, if you, if you're a doctor and you don't ask people about their diet and lifestyle and sleeping or whatever, you're a bad doctor because you're not addressing their health. You're just trying to push pills. And, and then the people that do that and do try to address their health and talk about their diet, they're like, oh my God, how dare you? How dare you talk about diet? It's just bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. So many things were popping through my head when you were speaking just then, because I worked in the medical, I was mentioned to you before, I worked in a medical centre accident emergency slash GP place, um, which I was doing as I was going through uni. And so I saw the behind the scenes of that. Mm-hmm. And it does really confuse me. And it, it saddens me a bit that because you know, there are doctors and there are people that genuinely want to help and get people off medication. But then I've seen the medical reps at work. I saw the smoothing, you see all the things. You literally see how drugs are pushed on doctors and how doctors then push them on patients. And it's quite scary and alarming, really, because it is a multi what trillion dollar industry, oh, yeah. pharmaceuticals. And the other thing it reminded me of is we, with neuro reset technique, which what I do, we actually prevent a ton of surgeries. You'd think that in that case where it's happening multiple times that they might want to get in contact with us. They might want to find out more about what we do. They might want to look into it a bit deeper, but typically they don't. And one of my clients in London, she had a permanently fused knee so she couldn't lengthen and straighten her leg completely her kneecap was like oh, at an yeah. angle which means she couldn't walk she hobbled you know when it got really bad she was on crutches and their their solution to this situation was to basically take off the bottom part of her leg and reattach it straight mm. right, so she comes to see me she's a teacher beautiful human being and I'm like, I don't know what the capacity is, but we'll give it a go and see what kind of results we're going to get. And her leg was completely straight. She went back. So off her crutches, loading fully, no limp, full mobility, fine. She went back to her appointment, which was meant to be six weeks before she actually had the surgery, and they recommended she have the surgery anyway. Weird. Now, like, what if it goes back? You've been on the waiting list for four years. What if it reverts back? We still suggest you go forward with the surgery. Again, like you said, costing tens of thousands of dollars. It doesn't make any sense to me. Mm-mm. So it's it sucks because there is huge amounts of corruption, and it is corruption, because that it, we're being told lies and spouted lies. I was even taught, you know, stuff at university that they know isn't true. They know it's not, and they're still teaching it. And, it, yeah, so the, that whole thing of coming after people when they're actually helping and 
and like trying to rip people's lives apart when they're genuinely doing good for the human race, it makes me really sad. It sucks. Yeah, it's it's a bit backwards, isn't it? And you know the the different systems and institutions end up sort of gaining their own life and independence, and they become more important than the people that they're supposed to represent and help and and provide for. So <laughs> it's a bit backwards, you know. You, you're you're helping the system as opposed to the people, and uh, that this, you know. And so you know, I think that's just. Um, that's why you have to do this as a grassroots movement. You have to just get, you have to just educate people, you know, educated, independent people are very hard to control and very hard to mislead. You know, it can be done, but it's, it's a much, it's much more difficult. That's why, you know, there's like different sayings going back thousands of years. You know, you keep people ignorant, you'll keep them under control. And I don't know why you have all these megalomaniacs out there just trying to control, you know, corrupt and, and have power over their fellow really man. Good. They can just, just live your damn life. You, you know, freak. Like, that's the thing. Like some of these people, like, I don't know what it is. Like they just have some sort of, you know, like crazy insecurities or something like that, that they feel that they have to be in control of other people. And they're not just secure enough in their own lives that they can just live their own life and be happy. They have to control other people and be dominant over them. It's just, it's just a bizarre thing uh, for me to see, but, but that's what you see. And you see people trying to keep people ignorant and trying to keep them uh, under their control. And, um, so you just have to, you just have to educate people and you just have to do these videos like this and have these discussions and, and put out this information and let people learn about it in their own time. And like you, you know, this, this changed your whole life and how you, and now you're looking back on everything going like, my God, I've been lied to my whole life. And so, yeah, yeah we just have to do that, uh, as much as we can. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it has been like so good. Mm. Not just for me, but I'm obviously helping tons of people. I do coach heavy meat based, if not carnival now. Um, and then if I have any situations that arise that I don't know how to deal with, then I've got amazing resources to tap into. So I do work with Barke when I need to. I like, you know, like th- there is the most incredible minds in the carnival community. There really are. And I'm so grateful. And, you know, I said yesterday on my post about you, like, I just get reminded every time I speak to a carny, as I like to call us, um, you know, it, the clarity of mind, the openness of mind, the and it does definitely show what we're eating <laughs> because, you know, grains make, like you said, complacent, dumbed down. You know, if you look back in history, like the tiniest bits too, it's so obvious. It's like, okay, let's give give the slaves grains, give the gladiators grains, let's keep them compliant, let's keep them stupid, let's keep them, you know, and why they all sat and ate meat. You can look at it, like you said, you've just got to be open and keep asking questions and it will start making sense. And then try it on yourself. I've definitely stepped back. When I first got into carnivore, I was very much like, do it. (laughs) And, and, um, almost again, like, oh, look how clever I am. I've found this thing and, you know, as much as I'm admitting that I was silly and I did wrong things, I'm like, I've, I slipped back into that same, everyone should do it. And I'm going to tell you why, and I'm right. And <laughs> you know, proving, proving it and showing all the stuff. And now I'm just like, okay, everyone, like you said, you've got to find it in your own timing and, for me, it came about when it did. And I'm so grateful that I have this knowledge now that it's just about sharing. It's just sharing it. And people will hear it and pick it up as they need to, it is they're ready. And just not to judge people for that or compare against what you're doing or any of those things that we do as human beings and just be in the experience of how it's changing and helping you. Because if you're willing to give it a go for even four weeks it's uh it's pretty outstandingly amazing clear <laughs> how much this is just the way to be and thrive and live and yeah it's great it's yeah. changed my family's life too massively okay yeah so uh, yeah how i was going to ask so how is how is everyone else in your family um coming around to this is everyone else doing this or or yeah, so my um, i've got three girls three little girls 10 7 and 2 they are all full carnivore. Cute. And 
it's awesome. Mm. They they absolutely love meat. That's I just so imagine funny. like these like this row of like you know these little blonde girls with they pig, are. Pig, pigtails with just like just just ripping into like carcasses, you know, there's, there's like a little Sunday dress and things like that. Yeah. They're, they're amazing. The baby walks around with these big bones, yeah, you know. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Just, yeah. She ate raw, raw mince the other day. She just bit straight through the packet. And I was like, babe, no. <laughs> it does show the primal, like, instinct yeah. that was there. Um, and it's so funny because she's two. Um, we had issues. I had issues when she was first born with her weight and her not gaining enough for them to be okay with her at the weight that they say is the right weight to mm. be deemed healthy not looking at any other factor of her health, just weight. Um, and she wasn't gaining enough for their tick boxes. And uh, we got put under a massive amount of pressure and stress by them. Mm -hmm. um, and basically an undiagnosed tongue tie, a few other things. Mm -hmm. uh, her, and we were threatened basically. Um, that if we did not admit her to hospital, if we did not put her on formula, which I was like, oh my God, I do not want to give my baby this poison because that's what it is. Yeah. And we can, we can dance around it as much as we like. That is poison. Um, and there are so many chemicals in that we don't even know what the side effects or implications are of that. I, and I did not want to do it. And, um, yeah, it was so stressful. I know you don't have kids, but, oh, my gosh, them threatening me with trying to, like, take my baby from me or, like, I was some kind of, like, you know, crack den hooker. <laughs> like, I brought my baby in because I was concerned about her her well-being, I, you know, yeah. don't threaten me now if I don't give her a formula that I'm some, and it just shows the way that the world is at the moment. And again, that's sucky. It sucks. But after that whole escapade, we now, she was temporarily on formula. Mm -hmm. We literally left London because, not because of that, but it was part of the end of our leaving and coming to New Zealand, but I was so glad. I literally, when I got on the plane, I felt like I was escaping from this war-torn, scary place mm. where they are going to take my kids from me and forcibly jab them with things and stick whatever food they want into them and poisons into them. And that sounds very dramatic, but it was how I felt when I left. And so I was so grateful because obviously this was before then that I had been heavy meat based slash carnivore and I was like okay we can heal her we can help her we know how to do it you know and we're just going to go through the processes of doing that and we have had to do that um with each of the girls because my my big girls were paleo they didn't even eat anything processed but they ate again a ton of plant matter a ton of nuts and seeds you know I used to make all these paleo treats and you know dates and nuts and seeds and like oh my god this is so healthy like <laughs> no so um I have done damage to my children thinking that I was again the super healthy organized mother who made everything from scratch and dehydrated everything and they had all their little things and I was so stupid so stupid so we've had to heal them indiana my middle one she had real bad gut issues like really bad stomach problems and i couldn't work it out what is going on so yeah we had to get help with that actually bart helped me when i did a consultation with him and just you know actually went how do i do this and he's like you need to basically take it all out and i was like how do i do that though like what does that even look like because I didn't know how to do that. And he said, look, I only know what to do. I'm not a parent. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> so it was hard at the beginning because she didn't understand either. She's like, well, mummy's told me these things are healthy. Vegetables are healthy. They're told it at school. They're told it everywhere. They're told it, you know, it's so drilled in from so many different directions. 
that's understandable why she's like, well, why would I believe this part? Like I like eating those things. Um, yeah. And so she didn't get it and we didn't want to over tell her over, you know, because we were trying to create less attention on it rather than more. Yeah. And so it was just like, oh, well, we can get everything that we need from eating this animal alone so we don't bother with this stuff anymore. And we just kind of broadly went, we're just going to focus on this. Um, but obviously they know a ton as well. They know most more than most adults know about health and digestion and food and just from being around us and listening to us because we talk about this stuff a lot. Like it is you know, part of our life and they understand now. And someone, my family's actually away on holiday, which is why my house is so quiet and peaceful and lovely. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, so nice. Um, but someone tried to give the, the baby potato. So she's, they, there was a shepherd's pie and they took off the top and my daughter was just having the mints and stuff. And obviously there'd be a little bit of trace potato starch or whatever in the juice, but very little. And, you know, a family member is like, oh, no, she can have the potato. And it's trying to, like, mm -hmm. put potato on her plate. And my 10-year-old actually yeah. stopped him and went, no, she doesn't eat vegetables. We don't eat plants. And she she likes the meat. She doesn't need anything. Like she's like ten and she's taking over. And it's so amazing. I'm like I'm so proud of her. But at the same time, again, it's almost like shit. The fact that these adults don't know this, and that she's having to stop someone giving my child something that's not good for her at ten and having that responsibility. Again, it's just a bit of a shame. It's like. Where have we gone wrong, you know, as humans? Um, yeah. yeah, so yeah. they're going to be great. They're, they're in a really good place now. And so how we basically run it at home, because I know we'll get questions about this afterwards and stuff with being a carnival mum. So my fiancé dabbles with potatoes, hence why there was a shepherd's pie on top of the meat part. Um, he literally, we call him Spud because he's just, he loves potatoes. Mm -hmm. And so he's carnival with potatoes on occasion. Probably 90% 90-ish percent of his food is just carnival, but he does have the old potato and he's happy with that. And that's cool. I'm not, yeah, as I said, no judgment. Um, but the girls are pretty good now. We started off by just giving them low oxalate versions of vegetables and pulling out all the to toxic ones and bringing the quantity down and increasing the fats and meats up and just started playing around with the ratios but then what I found was they just didn't want it so say we'd have burger and you'd have burger with bacon or cheese or egg or whatever and then so we'd do on the side for them maybe some pickle maybe some onion and some lettuce wraps or something something like that but they just started leaving the rest. And they're like, oh, I don't want the lettuce, mum. And then I'd have the lettuce out and I'd be like, you've just wasted a bloody $8 lettuce. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate wasting anything. So, but they just started leaving it. And so that was real easy. They kind of transitioned themselves over almost. Mm. And we encouraged it, obviously. But now we just have a thing where on a direct family member's birthday. So there's five of us, three kids, two adults. On one of our five birthdays, there might be something. It might be a piece of cake. It might be something, but that's it. And the rest of the time we are carnivore and stri pretty strict. I'm pretty strict. Um, and, you know, it's hard for family to understand, like the extended family and stuff to understand because like, well, you promoted vegetables so much for so long. And they all listened to me and, <laughs> you know, and they did have really dramatic health changes. Like my in-laws lost 30 plus kilos each. Um, thank God I actually took them off gluten and wheat and just processed foods because one of them was a celiac and she didn't know about it. So, you know, they did have huge tra transitions in their health. Same with my sister, same with my mom, lost tons of weight, you know, 
that being the indicator of health and feeling better and more energized and, you know, fitter and stuff. But so they were like, well, why now is this bad? Is this not just, and some people put this in comments and stuff, is this just another fad? And it's like, Mm -hmm. it's the least fatty type of food, of diet that I've ever come across. And it's the freest I've ever felt about food. I used to be obsessed with food. I used to weigh my food into me at one point. I had a nutritionist and she'd sit there with a calculator and work out all my things and tell me what I could eat and all the bits. And then I'd weigh out my things and I'd cut out my 25 grams of cheese and I'd slice it thinly on, on top of my, you know, like I was totally obsessed in a really bad headway with food because I was trying to control it because I didn't understand why I still didn't feel good. I still carried excess body fat, even though I trained six days a week. I I still, you know, I had what I thought were just my ankles and I have cankles. I don't have an ankle really. And I just thought that was just sadly a part of my, my build up, my genetics. And then when I went carnivore, suddenly I had an ankle bone and I was like, hang on a minute, what's going on down there? Parts of my body and myself that I thought were part of who I was, they weren't. It was inflammation. It was plants. And yeah, and so it has changed my life. And I'll never, ever eat a vegetable ever again. And I'm okay with that. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything, ever. I don't think and you're missing, actually, yeah. missing out on yeah. vegetables. Like, come on, you know, yeah. like, yeah, I'm very happy. I don't have to eat those things again. And how easy is it to cook and how easy mm. it is to, there's no prep. And this is what I hear over and over from my clients. They're like, oh my God, it's so yummy. It's so easy. And actually there's all this like, oh, how do I do that? If I go out and this, that and the other, but it's super easy. Mm. You just ask. You just ask. And most people, places are accommodating. And if they're not, then you find somewhere else. It's it's not that difficult to do it. Mm-hmm. You just, you do need to, I think having a really good, clear understanding of the why makes it so much easier to commit to, to stay consistent with, because you understand why those foods aren't good for you and what they're doing. That I That I find helps people is that education piece behind behind it. And also like just working out what, how to do it with their lifestyle, with what's going on with them, what's what important to them and stuff. But it is super easy. And, and now I feel free. I never think about food. I never, ever, ever. If I am hungry, I eat. If I'm not, I don't. It's literally as simple as that. If there's nothing I can eat when I'm out, then I just don't. Who cares? I'll eat later tomorrow whatever I used to oh my gosh I have to tell you the story when I first met my sister's fiance we were going for this dinner out and I had it set at this time because I had to eat every two and a half to three hours religiously because I was like running on blood sugar so every time I crashed I get such a hangry I was like emotionally unstable (laughs) (laughs) it's not good so we go to go to this dinner and we pick them up and they'd been drinking and whatever and they were late and get to the restaurant and I'm like, I need to eat. I'm literally hitting the wall. I felt sick. I felt shaky. I was like borderline rude to the waiter because I was like, I need to eat type thing and everybody bow. <laughs> and now I have consistent energy levels. I can train, do a whole day of client sessions and, you know, depending on if I'm online or in person, that can be really physical. I'm lifting limbs and moving people's heads are really heavy as well to work mm-hmm. with. But depending on what part of somebody's body I'm treating, it's a physical job. And I can get through all of that. And I'm I'm like, oh, it's six o'clock. Have I eaten today? And I'm actually asking and I'll say to my family, has anyone seen me eat today? <laughs> Have I actually eaten today? Because I don't even remember. That's how how my body is now able to use the stores that I have of fat and how, you know, I can actually utilize energy and I don't have dips and peaks and stuff in that. It's just pretty consistently great. So I just, I can't like recommend it high enough and it's changed my world. So good. 
It heals the unhealable. Have you seen my before and after photos? No, I don't think I have. So when I did the three months, yeah. when in January, when I did the three months and went strict, because I was eating that tiny bit, like I said, of plant, low oxalate plants at the at tiniest amount. I was like, is this going to make a difference? Because I quite like pickles. I quite like these things. Maybe I'll just keep like this little bit here. And I was like, what difference will it actually make? I did the least amount of training in that three months, maybe like once or twice a week, I'd do some light resistance, something, but barely anything. Cause I wanted to just look at what is just this impact. And that's probably the least amount of training I've done in my life. So for those three months, I just chilled, just ate meat and my body literally transformed. I lost, as I said, I lost body fat, but it was also my skin because I've had three babies really bad skin on my stomach, really get bad stretch marks and like heaps of excess loose skin. And I was like, oh, you can't do anything about this. This is just something that's, it doesn't matter how lean or small I get, I'm just going to end up with all this saggy loose skin. Um, And those things started to improve. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And every day I woke up, I'd see like a new line of definition in my doubt, or I'd see a bit of my hip or a piece of it that I'd never seen before. And I'm like, oh, there's a line in my forearm. I didn't know there even that there was meant to be a line there. Like mm-hmm. it's like this discovery of self thing. It was so cool because every day I got improvements. And so yeah, my my photos I think are quite like noticeable, the change in me. And just I just didn't want to go back. So after those three months, I was just like, well, I'm just, this is me now. I'm good. This is easier. It's easier not having to think about food. It's easier not having to, oh, to just go through life being confused about what to put in my bloody mouth. Like we are as a species so lost if we don't even know how to feed ourselves. We're so out of touch with our natural instinct and ourselves that we're here, obese, sick, dying, immobile, broken, and with a a very short capacity of life and quality of life. And we don't even know that these foods are making us crazy and full of anxiety and all the other things that they probably, you know, all the other problems they create. Yeah. Well, like um, Dr. Palmer from Harvard um, just wrote the book, Brain Energy, talking about how psychiatric issues, psychological issues, these things actually come down to problems of the metabolism and energy production at the level of the mitochondria, which is same as diabetes and same as, you know, you know, cancer really, we've known that for a hundred years and epilepsy and migraines and all these other things, all of these things come from a dysfunction in your metabolism and your energy mobilization and utilization in your body. And uh, I'm, I'm currently reading that book now. It's very interesting. And he, he's painting this out and he's actually shown, it's actually goes back decades in the literature uh, showing that that people were already thinking along those lines that psychiatric issues, like schizophrenia and major depression were actually coming from dysfunction in the mitochondria. And that's something that was shown again and again and again in study after study. And he now took hundreds of patients and, and put them on like just a ketogenic diet and was was curing people with serious like intractable diseases it was something like 90 percent of people on psychiatric meds and and therapy and things like that basically don't get help you know it works for about 10 percent of people and wow. other people it's sort of you know um like the normal standard of care that we we have now medications and therapy work for about, you know, really well for about 10% of people and then not so well for the rest. And then not at all for, a, a, you know, a number of other people, but about 90% don't get full resolution. And so that's not great. It's not a great, it's not a great treatment. And so now he was showing that putting people on just a ketogenic diet was actually showing a much better resolution of symptoms than all the standard of care, certainly better than standard of care. But he was having a number of people that you know, stopped hearing voices, stopped hallucinating and, 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 and um, you know, stopped having major depression and anxiety and OCD and all these other things. I mean, that's an incredible mm. thing to do for people and you know, literally give them back 
their life and their humanity. Because when your brain doesn't work properly, that's, that's it. That's you. That's who you are. You cannot function as a human being as well as you could otherwise. And it's, it's extremely difficult and debilitating to deal with that. And he's showing that, look, you just change the way you eat. And it can, and it can fix these things. So I think it's, you know, it's just amazing uh, how powerful that is. And like you say, it's, it's curing the uncurable. It's fixing things that people didn't even realize were wrong with them or that could be fixed. It's just like, this is just who I am. It's just, just how my life is. And that's what we've, we've often thought about things like schizophrenia or major depression. Well, that's just, that's just how it is, you know, or Huntington's disease. I was talking to Dr. Kiltz and he was, uh, was it Dr. Kiltz? Well, someone told me that they actually had some case reports of people with Huntington's that, that went like on, on keto and changed their diet and actually, you know, started, uh, um, uh, resolving their, um, their symptoms of, 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 uh, Jesus Christ of, um, I completely blanked on the name. I just said it. Was it like, um, what did I say? Huntington's. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't, I couldn't just think of the word that I had just said, but Huntington, um, you know, started, sort of, uh, sort of resolving these things, which I, I always thought was just a purely genetic. You have that gene, you will have that disease. It's very high penetrance. And so, um, you know, but that, you know, going back to penetrance, you have like identical twins. They both have the genes for something, but only 60% of them actually have symptoms right? They only, only 60% have the phenotype. So what does that mean? That means there's something in the environment that's, that's kicking these things off. And so now we're finding more and more and more that this has, has to do with the things we eat by and large. Yeah. That's so interesting. I love the human body. I literally am such a nerd. Did I tell you yesterday that I wanted to be a surgeon when I was a little girl and no. my mom used to, I used to make my mum bring me hearts and stuff and I'd sit yeah. and do them and I had my little things and oh that's cool I find the human body so interesting and what you're talking about there and the body's ability to heal itself I think it's so much bigger than that what we think like so much more mm. and if we get out of our own way and we just like yeah. trust instinct and eat the right thing and don't do the wrong thing and put poisons and toxins in ourselves and cover ourselves in toxins and chemicals and and then wonder why we're sick. Mm -hmm. I think the body, we don't even know what the capacity is for healing. That's exciting. I love that part. That's what I love about NRT as well, is that we are fixing the unfixable. We're curing the uncurable. Mm -hmm. We work with people. I get the best, most amazing job satisfaction because we get to help people like reclaim their lives like people are with carnivore. So it's just a beautiful mishmash of what I do in that realm with what I'm doing with food. And it's super simple as well. It's, it's clear. It's super like a hundred percent this knowing. And I, I'm sure you have that feeling too. You know that what you're eating is right. You almost feeling your body. I almost envision it like a fly in a spider's web, you know, and the spider just sucks it out and all that's left is this little dry piece. That's how I imagine our body absorbing meat. It's just, mm -hmm. we meant to eat it. It's made for us. And yeah, if we get out of our own way, I think our body has the potential to fix things that, that we currently can't. And that's an exciting way of looking at that. And I think, yeah, if we could just be more supportive of each other as human beings and not tear people down or not, you know, and I know it comes from money and I know it comes from corruption, um, which is a shame. And, you know, you can only do what you can do against it. And we can keep sharing our journeys and keep sharing, you know, our authenticness of actually wanting to help people. And hopefully people will start waking up to it because if you just eat meat, you're going to thrive. That's one tick. Okay, I know what to eat. Done. That's a big part of like life, right? And then you can work on other things. Look at other things. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too, you know, like you're saying that you just change the way you eat and this can, you know, cure some of these things. What, what does that mean? It really means that the food is is causing these problems. And 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 I think that's very important to realize and realize that these things aren't diseases, 
you know, mm-hmm. that, that this is, this is coming from our environment. This is, this is a toxicity. This is an exposure relationship. And once we figure that out, once we recognize that on, on a grand scheme and we can start saying, okay, well, let's start looking at what, what do you have to eliminate to sort of eliminate these issues and why, why does it do that? Very good questions. But until we do that, until we recognize that these are exposure issues, you know, we're, we're just going to be barking up the wrong tree. You know, if you have a disease like a, you know, some sort of you know tuberculosis or something like that, and your body's not fighting it off. Well, you know, antibiotics are something you're going to need. But if you have these other issues and you're trying to just find a pill that like helps mitigate some sort of process that's happening, well, that's the wrong track because really what you need to do is you need to remove that exposure and remove that from your, your environment. And once you do that, your body just starts getting better. And that's the thing is like your people are healing from these things. And it's like, well, what they're really doing is just not being you know exposed to this harmful uh, you know toxin or whatever it is. And then your body just, like you say, just gets on with it. And we are, we should be much more healthy than we are. And people don't realize just how healthy they can be, just how good they can feel, just how long they can live, just how, you know, naturally they can be without medications, without any of this, you know, the, the, the modern sort of medications that we, that we need, you know, there's always going to be a role for surgery. There's always going to be accidents. There's always going to be trauma. There's always going to be other sort of ailments, but you know, we can at least start addressing this correctly and start getting, you know, at least eliminate this from our, um, you know, from, from our list of issues that we have. Yeah. 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 It's funny because people almost believe that they're giving up something though. I know. And it is this thing of, oh, I could never do that. People go, oh, I could never do that to me. I love, you know, I love bread. Or I, bread is a lot of something that people love, loves as well as sugar. You know, it's so addictive. It's like, do you not realize why you're hanging on to that so much? You're super addicted to that and you don't even know it, but you're so protective of it and you want to hang on to it so desperately that you're going to not look at any of these other factors and just go, no, 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 it's fine in moderation. Oh, I hate that bloody saying, fine in moderation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's, like, like, it's a, like, you know, genocide in moderation, you know, anything in moderation, you know, you know child balance. abuse in moderation, yeah, whatever. Yeah, balance. You know, you know I yeah. smack her and I hug her. It's fine. Well, that's it. It has to be a balance, you know, like, you know, <laughs> you, you can't just be nice to your kids. It has to be a balance, you know, I have to beat them and be nice to them because yeah. it has to be balanced, you know, like, no, that does, things don't have to be balanced. Otherwise, like, you're restricting good. yourself. Yeah. Well, that's it. Well, it's not healthy, right? It's not healthy to be unbalanced, you know? And so if you if your kids just, you know, know that you love them and are there for them and care for them, well, then obviously the, that's not going to, they're not going to grow up to be, uh, you know, responsible adults with, you know, well-adjusted emotions. Like, no, obviously not. You need to beat them too. Like this is, this is stupid. And um, you know, balance, balance of what, you know, a balanced diet is, is getting all the nutrients that you need to survive. That's what a balanced diet is. And that's what that means. That's what historically that means. But people have assumed that, oh, you need, it's just a balance of all these different things. No, that's not what that means. You want, you want a balanced diet. Fatty meat is a balanced diet for humans, basically any animal really, because they can all absorb, you know, fat and meat, uh, fat and protein. But, you know, that, that's what balanced diet means. It means you're getting all the nutrients that you need to survive. And so, you know, eating things that aren't biologically appropriate for us is not part of a balanced diet. That's actually an inappropriate diet. That's Mm -hmm. actually something that can cause harm. It has these defense chemicals. It has, you know, these nutrients locked up in chemical bonds that you can't break, you know, like how is that part of a balanced diet? That's not adding anything to your life. It's, it's actually detracting. That's what I say. I say it's taking from you. It's taking from you. It's Mm. not giving you anything. Yeah, it's actually taking away, and you're let you're. That's what you're choosing to do. Yeah. So it's definitely a shift of perception. Of perception, you've got Mm. to look at it as that what you're gaining rather than what you're losing, and you gain so much by just eating what we made made to eat. And letting the rest of it go. And it gets easier and easier. It really does once you just, because all your cravings go away. You don't want it anymore. Mm-hmm. You're like, well, I don't want that. I literally don't. So um, the, my in-laws got fish and chips last week. And it just doesn't look like food to me anymore. <laughs> I'm 
the plate going, it's just a pile of beige. Like yeah. the fries <laughs> and the battered fish and the I'm just like, that's not even food. It doesn't look like food. And that makes it almost easier because I I'm not tempted ever. I had a I had a coaching call today and she said something about you know, are you putting in the work and effort or are you sitting on the sofa watching Netflix accidentally eating Doritos? Like, where did the Doritos come from? And I just had a, you know, I was just listening, blank expression. She went, I know you don't have that problem, Jess. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think about it because it's not food to me. It's just yeah. plastic. Yeah. That's how I look at it now. I'm like, well, that's just plastic. Yeah. Why would I put that in my body? And I think when we turn our, you know, viewpoint to what it's taking from us, it is easier to not have those things and just know as well that that health and the potential of your health, you might think, Oh, I'm good. I've got great energy and you know, I can do all the things I want to do and I'm enjoying the foods I want to eat. So I'd rather eat things that are poisonous for me or toxic to my system Mm -hmm. because I'm happy with the way that my life is and I don't want to be uncomfortable or, or self-sacrifice or whatever other things that people tell themselves about giving up processed mm. foods and vegetables. Um, but if, you, if you're if you willing to, to, yeah, be open and look at it and try it, your health will change and then you have your answer. You don't need to be proven. We don't need to show you guys pieces of research and data and statistics for you to make a decision about this. It's really super simple, which is just give it a go. Look at how your health changes. Your energy levels will change. Your skin will change. My skin issues, I had terrible like dermatitis slash eczema stuff. I suffered for for since I was, I literally, since I was a baby, I was covered in it when I was born. Mm -hmm. And those things that I'd always suffered with that never, ever healed, healed. If we just put in the right things and like you said, don't expose ourselves to the toxic things. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully people will start wanting to actually be better and rather than sticking in what's the norm. And I hate it that they'll look around and go, well, I'm not as sick as that person. So I'm doing really well. It's like, Stop comparing yourself to other sick people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't even know what it's like to be healthy. How do you even know what you're giving up right now? Yeah. Yeah. There's so much more out there for us all as humans. Yeah. It's not being medicated for the rest of your days. Like even before carnivore, you can help people with blood pressure. You can help people come off statins. You can help people with health. This is like, it's so much simpler than all of that. Just eat meat. Yeah. <laughs> and don't eat the other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Uh, well, Jessica, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you as usual. Um, can you tell us where we can get a hold of you and follow you and uh, find your stuff? Yeah. So my carnival page is at the carnival mummy, mm-hmm. which is nice and easy. It's mummy with a U for the, my, for the U S people. <laughs> um, and then I don't really have any pages for my NRT, which is the neuromuscular therapy that we do um, because, as I mentioned, it's super rare. There's less than 20 of us in the world. Oh. And so it's not really well, it's not really up there, out there for people because um, we're pretty much all fully booked. So, um, <laughs> But if you want to get in touch with me about either health or your muscular stuff or nutrition, then you can just go through my carnival mummy page. Yep. That's a place to start. Sounds good. All right. It's been so good to chat with you. It's yeah. been so awesome. Yeah. You too. And I just want to say thank you for all that you do because you have been a big part of my journey too, even before oh. I met you. Yeah. And I super appreciate, you know, you wanting to help the world because you are, you know, I say this to all my carny friends, but I'm like, you know, if we just stay the course, people will come along because they're going to see us as well. We're going to start looking better and better and better. And they're going to be like, how are you anti-aging? How do you look better now than you looked 10 years ago? And then they'll start, they'll come along eventually, but we recommend you jump on the bandwagon sooner rather than later. Um, because yeah, it's just, it's just the best. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think, I think, you know, it is, it is picking up steam and I think more and more people are, um, you know, 
finding out about it and then trying it for themselves and, and, and seeing exactly what it can offer them. So hopefully we just keep going and, and everyone can, can at least know how to, how to get better if they want to. Yeah. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and uh, see you again soon. Hey guys, thank you very much for taking the time out to listen to what I had to say. If you like it, then please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and podcast. And if you're on YouTube, then please hit that little bell and subscribe. And that'll let you know anytime I have a new video out, which should be every week, if not more. And if you could share this with your friends, that would help me get the word out and let me know that you like what I'm doing. Thanks again, guys. Mm -hmm.